Hi folks, this is Jason. Hope you're okay today. <clears throat> we come to our last part on our series, The Word of God in Your Life. So let's come before the Lord and ask His blessing. Dear God, <clears throat> we acknowledge that we're nothing. We acknowledge that we're empty. We acknowledge that we cannot be anything without Your help and strength. So Father, I pray and I give Thee the glory and the honour. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that you might be pleased to bless us. God, I pray that thou might be pleased to give me strength, that you will be glorified, and that, Lord, this message will bless us, that we would meet with you, Lord, by your Holy Spirit, in your name. Amen. So we come to the final part of our message, and I hope it's been a blessing to you. We want to deal with people who doubt. Maybe you doubt the Bible. Maybe you doubt the word of God, okay? He said, Jay, I'm a, I, I, I'm, I'm a Christian, but I doubt the Bible, Jay. Or you might be a skeptic. You don't even believe the Bible at all. <clears throat> I just want to give some pointers on this, uh, just to help you. Um, first of all, just some basic things. First of all, the Bible is historically accurate. There are people in the church, pastors and leaders, who say you can believe in the Bible and on its history it's got it wrong, but it doesn't matter. But no, that's not true. The Bible has not got its history wrong. The Bible's correct in its history. It's historically accurate. Often the skeptics have said, um, an example, uh, some skeptics said, the Bible was wrong, there's no such place as Nazareth. So there were sceptical scholars not so long ago who would say, the Bible is wrong, There is it mentions Nazareth, but there's no such place as Nazareth. Archaeology has found there is a place called Nazareth, uh, archaeologically speaking. So in other words, the Bible is accurate on its history. Another example is scholars used to think that there was no such place as Sodom and Gomorrah, that it was all mythical and that it wasn't the case. But now we're beginning to find evidence that there was a Sodom and Gomorrah. So the Bible's accurate historically. Secondly, the Bible has prophecies. The Bible's full of prophecy. And it's amazing. It's amazing because sometimes you don't realise in the Old Testament there are prophecies. But there are prophecies. You know, it was prophesied that they would cast lots for the Lord's garments in Psalm 22, etc., etc., Another accusation is the Bible has changed. Muslims like to use this and skeptics use it. I mean, this is so anti-intellectual, it's unbelievable. If you actually study the evidence, read J.P. Moreland, Martin Engel, who's a world-class scholar, he's, he's passed away a few years ago. People like that, and, and read, read Dr. Balcom and top scholars, and, and you'll find that this kind of argument that these people are using are just ridiculous. Um, the Bible is about Christ. It's it, it's focused about Him. So, you know, when you're doubting the Bible, come back to that main story of why the Bible's been written, why all the books is for to tell us about Jesus. Okay, if you get that overarching story that the Messiah in the Old Testament was prophesied to come, and Jesus fulfilled the prophecies. And he is the Messiah. If you get that overall story, a lot of your intellectual problems will, will go away. All right? Once you've got that overall story. And then the Bible changes lives. Okay? You get Dawkins, you get any of these atheist scholars, put their books there, put the Bible there. Which one's changed the most people's lives? Dawkins' book, God Delusion, doesn't change prostitutes and drug addicts. The Bible changes drug addicts and prostitutes and all sorts of people from all sorts of life and gives them a new life. So these are just some things, but let's just go to scripture that can help us to deal with doubts. We turn to John chapter 7, 17, and he said, Jay, don't you have doubts? I have doubts. Uh, you know, you wouldn't be human if you didn't have doubts. Um, you know, everybody has doubts. You know, even skeptics have doubts about skepticism. Um, but, I believe the Bible to be the Word of God based on good evidence. Um, with, uh, some of it I've just shared with you. Um, but, at the end of the day, 
These are some of the key things that we need to be remembering about believing in the Bible. John chapter 7 verse 17. If anyone wills to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine whether it is from God or whether I speak of my own authority. I'll read it again. John 7:17. 7, if anyone wills to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine whether it is from God or whether I speak on my own authority. If you do the Bible, you'll know whether the Bible is the truth or not. It'll either work in your life or it won't work in your life. And if it works in your life, you know that it's true. Now, a lot of young people have a lot of intellectual doubts and questions. Okay. Now, it's going to be even worse for you. If you are sleeping around, when you know you shouldn't be sleeping around, if you're taking drugs or getting drunk, but then you're saying, Jay, I doubt the Bible. You're going to doubt the Bible. Because you're not obeying the Bible. So you're never going to find out whether the Bible's true. So clean up your life and start obeying it. And the Bible will confirm itself to you. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1 to 5. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 2. Verse 1 to 5. It says, My son... If you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find knowledge of God. You've got to treasure the word of God, okay? You know, uh, you n excuse me, if you don't treasure something, if you don't value something, then you're never really going to appreciate it, really. You know, it, it's like I've if someone gives me a great big diamond and it's in my house, but I don't value it. I just don't, I'm not bothered about it. I don't value it. Well, I'm never really going to appreciate the riches that I have. And it's the same with the Bible. If you just don't value it, then you're never really going to appreciate what it is. Now, even if you are a skeptic, even if you disbelieve the Bible, you still have to value the Bible. You can't get away from the fact that if you look at the history of science, the Bible has influenced science like no other book. All the great key developers of science throughout history, the major turning point of history, the main ones, have been through Christians who believe the Bible. Some of the great philosophical and cultural developments throughout Western and Eastern civilization came through the Bible. Or some of the great literature, not most of the great Western literature has been influenced by the Bible. Some of the great artists, some of the greatest sculptures and music has been influenced by the Bible. So you can come to the Bible and appreciate its riches even if you don't believe it. So you've got to have a respect for the Bible. And if you don't have a respect, then you're never going to find out what it's about or that it's true. Psalm 119, verse 18. Psalm 119, verse 18. Psalm 119, verse 18. Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your law. Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your law. If you're going to find out whether the Bible's true, you've got to pray. You cannot know the Bible by pure intellect. You will never ever understand the Bible by pure intellect. You will always miss it. You've got to come with a humble heart and say, Father, God, I don't know if you're there, but please open my eyes and if you are a, a Christian and you've got intellectual problems ask the Holy Spirit to teach and guide you and say please Holy Spirit I've got this intellectual problem help me and he'll help you so I ask the Holy Spirit's help to open your eyes James chapter 121 James keep looking at the time. I, I want to do it in sections you see, so I have to stop at a certain time. James chapter 121 James chapter 121 
It says, Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word of God which is able to save your your souls. So, you've got to clean up your life, but also you've got to receive the word of God with meekness. Now, if you've got an intellectual problem, if you come humbly before God and say, God, I, I, I've got intellectual problems about your word, help me. He'll help you. He'll, he'll guide you and, and answer your questions. But if you come to the Bible proud, you're never going to find the truth. You're never going to get it. I'm sorry, but you're never going to get the truth. Your attitude has got to come with humility. So... I just want to say I've studied at uh, two seminaries, um, one evangelical, semi-liberal, and a liberal seminary. I'm a conservative e evangelical, I'm not liberal, okay. So I've studied at a liberal seminary, and I've studied at an uh, evangelical, semi-liberal, semi okay. And I can honestly say that I've seen hundreds of students, many, many lecturers, theological lecturers, etc., and most of the problems that that the students have had is because they think they're clever and most of the problems that the seminary professors have is because they think they're clever and if you think you're clever if you think you're smart you're going to have problems with the Bible because basically you're going to put your intellect above the Word of God and you're never going to find whether the Bible's true or not we turn to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew 13. We'll just read... Um, well, I'll tell you what, we'll finish with that in another video. I'll finish with that in another video. Um, but I just want to I just want to say that that's, we're not being anti-intellectual here. We're saying that we answer, we, God will answer your questions, but you've got to come with humility, all right? Not shunning questions. But if you come with a, a attitude of pride, you're never gonna, you're never gonna get there. You're never gonna understand the Bible. That's the point. John Wesley says, "I want to know one thing." the way to heaven, how to land safe on that happy shore. God himself has condescend to teach the way for this very end he came from heaven and he has written down in a book. Oh give me that book. And John, uh, uh, an anonymous word here. This book contains the mind of God, the state of man, the way of salvation, the doom of sinners and the happiness of believers. Its doctrines are holy, its precepts are binding, its histories are true. Its decisions are immutable. Read it to be wise, believe it to be safe, and practice it to be holy. It contains light to direct you, food to support you, comfort to cheer you. It is the traveller's map, the pilgrim's staff, the pi pilgrim's staff, the pilot's compass, the soldier's sword, and the Christian ca ch ca charter. Here paradise is restored, heaven opened, and the gates of hell disclosed. Christ is its grand object, our good is its design, and the glory of God its end. It shall fill the memory, rule the heart, guide the feet. Read it slowly, frequently, and prayerfully. It is a mind of wealth, a paradise of glory, a river of pleasure. It, give, it, it is given in life, will be opened in judgment, and will be remembered forever. It involves the highest responsibility, will reward the greatest honor, and will condemn all who trifle with its sacred contents. So we're going to just finish in one more video with a reading of a, a scripture verse and then a little thought and then closing prayer so thank you for listening and i hope that was a blessing to you take care